Welcome back everybody, Derek Sue, your 2022 Oakland Mayoral candidate. Well, I've been out here uh, on the streets here in East Oakland and I've been working with my particular uh, sanctioned encampment, uh, actually City of Oakland sanctioned encampment number one. We got our sanctioning back in March 18th in uh, 2018 and that was by Libby Schaap. So that was the picture. If you can search out the picture with me and, and Mayor Libby Schaap together out here. And there's a good story that goes uh, along with that picture as to why there wasn't media coverage on that. So anyway, uh, I worked personally with the, the uh, community here. I represent over 350 homeless individuals out here in East Oakland. Uh, that includes not only my encampment, but some of the other uh, uh, independent uh, operated uh, encampments. Uh, and also I represent a lot of the folks over at uh, uh, the RV Safe Park. And then also there's uh, some other uh, encampments on that side and all the way to a San Leandro border. And I've been able to house a lot of people. When I first returned back here during COVID, uh, that was back in uh, 2020, shortly after the start of COVID. And, and uh, I made a promise to everybody uh, that uh, now that I was back, I was going to assist everybody in the housing who wanted to go into housing of some form. And so uh, <clears throat> that I pretty much have fulfilled. Uh, when I returned, there were approximately 42 individuals here. And this was a, a real uh, tough uh, uh, situation because uh, uh, the criminals had taken over uh, my encampment uh, while I was gone. And uh, the police didn't know how to deal with uh, some of the real serious issues here. And uh, one of the tenants at the end of the street here, uh, they wanted to, to actually get out of their lease because it was so dangerous. And so uh, I, I tried to assist them uh, with that because I, I did say that, you know, it was a very dangerous situation. And the reason why I say it was a dangerous situation is because uh, the criminal element down there had, were armed and they were very well armed and so uh, that created a, a very dangerous situation for folks and I actually dealt with it uh, uh, within two weeks uh, that that element was uh, removed from the camp and that was without a single shot being fired or a harsh word being said and so I do have the, the talent and the know-how uh, because I worked in 20 years in counterterrorism. These are some of the subtle things that we're, we're able to do and uh, these folks either move on or they're put back uh, in jail because of uh, outstanding warrants. The uh, reason we had one here that was so uh, entrenched was because of uh, the COVID uh, restrictions uh, at our uh, county jail. And this individual had nine outstanding warrants. And the police would, law enforcement would uh, check in with me every so often, is so-and-so still here? And I said, absolutely. And, and so uh, there were constantly being checked up on, but I said, what are you going to go pick him up? And and they said, we don't know. It's, he said, you blame the uh, COVID on uh, why we're not taking anybody to jail. It's still catch and release. And today it's still a lot of that what we see. <clears throat> but uh, what's changed is that uh, I've been able to house all but one person right now. And, and even very, very difficult uh, individuals. Uh, and I'm also going to talk about the importance of why we need to have uh, passage and uh, 
at least put into place the CARES Court Act. Uh, I've had experience with conservatorship uh, court uh, through my uh, uh, own family, my dad specifically, and, and then I've been through the court process for probate also through uh, two uh, executorships, one for an uncle and then one for my mother. Uh, and, and so I, I do know the uh, ins and outs of a lot of uh, the probate courts and uh, dealing with the transfer of titles on, on property. And, and you do need to have good legal advice. I did have good legal advice and, and at the time that good legal advice uh, costs $500 an hour and every phone call, even if it's 30 seconds long, is a $500 phone call. So uh, the lawyers know what they're doing, but also uh, they can also keep you out of trouble and make sure uh, as an executor that you are responsible uh, for a lot of different things, and I was. But uh, taking care of the finances and, and sharing that. So anyway, I didn't digress. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> only one person remains here in Rangers community. But we have floaters that come in uh, throughout the evening. Sometimes they stay and uh, we're a safe park because uh, we have cameras uh, all along the route, uh, which is also why we have uh, uh, high rate of uh, uh, catching illegal dumpers and, and uh, that issue is being dealt with uh, here uh, and also we've been able to quietly move on a car theft ring and I'm, we're going to walk down there and you're going to see what uh, I've been dealing with uh, but I'm going to turn the camera around and we're going to go on a little tour. So, it's day two. Okay, uh, right where I, we're looking at in that hole. That uh, was one of uh, my more difficult uh, uh, folks getting housing. And, and so, anyway, she's in housing. Jerry's in housing. Then we have me. And we have off and on uh, my neighbor right here and, and the girlfriend the girlfriend has mental issues so uh, we have uh, the care support act which would uh, really assist getting folks in the housing and the treatment uh, that they really need and then this one uh, trash pile here it uh, this one's been trying to deal with that. We've been trying to deal with that with the city for months. Uh, this goes back to February. They just got the BMW out of, out of here. This van got dumped in March, and so we're trying to get rid of that uh, at the same time. And then uh, we have a fire bug that uh, was kind of using it as housing, but more of a thing to store trash. And so we had a big fire here a week and a half ago. And so he caused all of this. Yeah. <clears throat> and so this isn't his first time. It's not like it was an accident. Yeah. And then we have what used to be a, a criminal hideout here. And this used to be referred to as criminal corner. They've all been moved on. We have some legitimate uh, residents here. And then at the end of the street, we have a car theft ring that has now been moved on. <clears throat> They're not here anymore. They had a tent set up here. You still see the, the vehicles that they've stolen and stripped down. black pickup truck way in the back there. That's been there since February. And the police officer that uh, showed up here once and stupidly asked, you know, is this yours? And they said, yeah, it's mine. And I was working on it when it was 
was clearly being stripped down. So then we had that deal that showed up a couple of weeks ago. And then that one went away about a week and a half ago. But uh, anyway, they're right now in that Thanks for joining me today. We'll be right back. So in closing folks, I just want to say, please consider me, Derek Sue, for Oakland Mayor 2022 on the November 8th ballot. I'm a community advocate. I'm not a politician, but I do get a lot of things done here. And if you elect me mayor, I promise to continue that same track where we are going to clear the streets of are unhoused, get them into housing, uh, deal with the criminal element here through new uh, detection and new methods to uh, rid our city of those criminals and the criminal activities that they're causing. And, and by closing down the homeless encampments, we free our streets of the criminal element that hides uh, under the cover of a homeless individual. And so we create the housing solutions. One of the housing solutions that, that I have is Oakland's Middle Harbor. That's a 180 acre site that can be utilized because it is a city of Oakland community land trust property. And uh, Alameda County has nothing to do with this property. This is the city of Oakland. This was awarded when uh, the federal government returned a lot of uh, the federal property back to Alameda County and the city of Oakland. And so by utilizing Oakland's Middle Harbor as a site, uh, we can uh, create the new solutions, long-term solutions without high cost. And we can minimize those costs by implementing programs that, that I've been advertising or talking about and advocating for which are the tiny home villages and wood street is a great example of a location that can uh, utilize those sites and uh, create the successful tiny home villages and these are tiny home villages that can be around for a long long time well i'm talking 25 years 30 years are typical because this is a city of Oakland community land trust property. So it costs city of Oakland no uh, money out of their pocket to utilize the site. Uh, there will be some redevelopment uh, that can come along with that, but th those are uh, uh, monies that can come out of TIFs and EIFD funding. And so, uh, the viability is very high, the cost is very low, and this uh, gives a, a safe site for those that want to enter into permanent long-term housing. So that's what I have uh, planned on the books. Thanks for joining me today.